My name is Trent Branch, and I'm going to be telling the story of my great-grandfather, George Dublin's service in the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps. He was involved in World War II and the Korean War, and he even spent a year in Iraq as a defense contractor outside Baghdad in 2004. I was born on April 11, 1927, in Weymouth, Massachusetts. I dropped out of school as a sophomore in high school to help support my family. At the age of 17, I lied about my age to enlist in the U.S. Navy on June 6, 1944 during the final stages of World War II. I served as a night watchman aboard ships in Boston Harbor. During these long nights, my wife, who suffered from polio, would cook me dinner and bring it to me to eat on board ship around midnight every night. This was before gangways were used to get on board ships, and we hung huge nets off the sides to get from the dock to the deck. My wife had one leg that was five inches shorter than the other due to polio. She refused to receive help from any of the sailors on the dock and climbed up those nets by herself every single night to have dinner with me. I left the Navy to work with my father at his small advertising company in 1946. Two years later, I enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps on April 26, 1948. I worked as an electrician and mechanic on the airplanes used in Korea. I was stationed on the Thailand island of Guam from 1952 to 1953. During this time, I repaired damaged planes, helped to attach bombs to the wings of bombers, and helped with the general upkeep of the aircraft. The runway on Guam was made of hard packed sand with gigantic grates laid on top to allow the planes to take off and land. Every now and then our base would be bombed. These bombing raids would last for as long as a week and were extremely chaotic. There were no bunkers or trenches for us to run to, so we would find whatever cover we could in the small Quonset huts and other buildings around the base. In between each wave of enemy bombers, the other mechanics and I would work desperately to fix the damaged aircraft and get them up in the air. We would strip parts off the other planes that were way too damaged to fly again and use those to get the other planes off the ground. We used parts off anything we could find, including scrap metal and even parts we pulled off cars and trucks. I'd like to say that in each week, long bombing, I learned more about fixing planes and staying alive than in months of training back in the United States. When the raids would stop for a long enough time, we rushed down onto the runway and pulled away the huge metal grates to replace them with new ones. We also filled in the enormous craters left by the bombs. We had to do whatever it took to make sure that the planes that still were able to fly could get off the ground and get to safety when the enemy bombers returned. It was one of the most stressful times in my life. When I finally left Guam in 1951, I realized that even though the people from Guam were some of the nicest people I ever met, I never wanted to see that miserable little island ever again. I retired from the military right before Vietnam broke out. I remained in the U.S. Marine Corps for 20 years and I rose to the rank of gunnery sergeant. I traveled all over the country and the world with the Marines. Due to my service, all six of my children were born in different states. One of my daughters even went to 11 different schools in 12 years of school. In 2004, I went to Iraq as a defense contractor with my son Charlie. I spent over a year in Iraq around Baghdad, and I loved it. There was one time that we were escorting a construction company through a particularly nasty area. Our convoy was fired on, and we fired back. I thought it was amazing. I was the oldest living Marine in Iraq and the highest ranking Marine was required to salute me at the Marine Corps birthday ball. I thought that was great because I hate officers. I look back on my service with pride, but it does not define me in my eyes. I look at my children, my grandchildren, and even my great-grandchildren as my most important impact on the world. I'm not one for looking back at the glory days for the rest of my life. I keep up with current events and spend time with my family. My great-grandfather passed away in October 2012 at the age of 85. He was always good for a joke or a conversation about just about anything. Although he dropped out of high school, he was one of the smartest men that I've ever met. 
He was extremely proud of his service to his country, and he would not have traded it for anything. His service in the Navy and the Marines allowed him and his wife to be buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C.